coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family. Shout out to everybody out there on the team. They really the all the claps and shit. They love. Appreciate the support. Boom, boom. We out here. 33 years of prison stories, man. We rolling, we rolling, we rolling. We getting to it. Uh, appreciate everybody, man. Much love, much love, man. Everybody who went and subscribed on my platforms, man. Thank you, Pound Prison Fitness and Living Life After Life Podcast. We almost there. We almost at a thousand subscribers. We just got to get the watch time up, man, and we rolling. We're going to be going live. We're going to be doing all of that as soon as we get uh we get certified, man. So I appreciate the love. I appreciate all y'all who rocking with me on all these platforms. Big love. Big love. Uh, man, today I wanted to talk real fast about a uh, uh, crazy, crazy uh, uh, situations that always happens in the kitchen, man. It be a lot of kitchen fights, man. A lot of kitchen fights. I got my own theory of why it be fights in the kitchen, you know, but who's to say? Who really knows, man? But I know it goes down in that kitchen, man. And I believe personally that a lot of fights happen in the kitchen because dudes will choose to fight in the kitchen because the kitchen is isolated. It's isolated. They may be scared of getting jumped. They may be scared of getting you know, hurt too bad and, and nobody, you know, can rescue them. But, you know, if you in that kitchen and you get the rumbling, you know, versus you getting the rumbling on the yard or you get the rumbling in the pod, you know, the officer got to see it, make the call, get help to come, and that may take forever. They may not see it. You know, I done seen many dudes get punished in the pod, get punished on the yard, and um, they already fighting for their life before uh, you know any any help is even notified. So that that right there changes everything. So when you in that kitchen, it's always gonna be a police on deck. It's gonna be a police outside. It's gonna be a couple of police outside because most of the time the kitchen is is close to the administration building. So it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a lot of officers on the scene. So dudes pick those type of uh, areas to have fights. To me, because they looking for help, they want to, they want a way out. You know what I'm saying? They 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 want you know that rescue team to come get them, and at the same time they showing they ain't scared. They will fight. Woo woo woo. So it's just it's just I don't know. You know if you if you got to be in there to understand what I'm saying. You know from the outside looking in, it's like a dude ain't scared to fight. But from when you know penitentiary and you know what's going on. If you really wanted to get it in with somebody and you really wanted to put some put some work in, then you're not going to really pick pick the kitchen to do that because you know it's going to be quick. They're going to be on the scene so fast. As uh, soon as that, that kitchen person is in there, the officers see it, they going straight to the radio. And within a couple of minutes, two, three, four, five minutes, they're going to be flooding up in there, man, like like they done found uh, Osama bin Laden or something. You know what I'm saying? They coming 10, 15, 20 deep, and it's only going to be a certain amount of people in the kitchen, so they're not really worried about, you know, uh, other people piling in or whatever because, like I say, you can have a homeboy or you could be in a gang or whatever, and then your people get to fighting, and then other people going to come and get involved. This is why they lock the kitchen when you go in there. They get a certain amount of people in the kitchen and they lock both doors. You you can't get out. Can't nobody get in. You know, so it's isolated, you know. But at the same time, I done seen them many dudes get punished in that kitchen even before help can get in there. They, they done got punished in that kitchen because either they done miscalculated or, you know, yeah, <laughs> when you put your life in the hands of the COs anyway, you already, you, you lose it. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't feel like they're going to save you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Even if they get there, they're not going to save you. I haven't, I haven't seen them get there and just talk. Uh, depending on the situation, depending on if it's Bethlehem play or not, they're going to talk. Hey, stop it. Stop it. It ain't nobody just diving in and just, you know what I'm saying, jumping on you and pulling you up off of somebody or grabbing the dude that got the knife they're gonna they're gonna do more verbal than anything else but you know some reason though it make dudes feel even safer man because it, it pops off in that kitchen i mean on a regular basis and that's why besides the fact that the food was garbage 
I didn't never really uh, go in the kitchen like that. I, I never really went in the kitchen like that. After a couple of years, I was in prison, man. I stopped going to the kitchen. Um, I felt like it was a death trap, you know. Uh, I felt like it was a setup. The food was garbage. You know, the kitchen used to smell. You know, you got fly traps hanging in the kitchen, man. In the kitchen where you eat at. They got fly traps hanging up in there, man. Them little zappers, the little ones that stick the flies to it. So you walk in the kitchen, you got a hundred flies on a hundred uh sticky things. It's 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 just it's it's gross, man. It's it's just sickening. But um this is prison, man. This is what they do in there. This is how it goes down. You know, I always felt like the trays won't won't uh clean, you know, the cups ain't clean. You might get cups that got you know, food in it, stains in it, you know, it's, man, it's disgusting, man. <laughs> it's disgusting. So I didn't frequent the kitchen like that, but it won't nothing for me to, to hurt or, or be back in the block and man, and then they all saying, man, well, everybody come back, everybody got to lock up, lock up, what happened? Somebody in the kitchen and got the rumbling, you know what I'm saying? It might have been from our block. You know, you will have dudes in a block together and they beefing. And they'll wait till they go to the kitchen to fight. You right here in the block. You can go in the cell with each other. You can rumble in the pod. They'll argue, argue, have words, go back and forth. And then they call, child call, and dudes go to the kitchen. And then they get in the kitchen and they get to the rumble. Because, like I say, I think they feel, you know, like in their mind that they're going to be safe in the kitchen. They ain't going to get jumped. Um, the police going to be right there. You know what I'm saying? So... It, it just be crazy. I've been in the block with dudes, man. One of the last, matter of fact, one of the last, um, yeah, one of the last kitchen jumps I remember was being in the block with two dudes, man. They got the arguing, they beefing, they running their mouth. It started at nighttime all the way to the morning time and um, goes all the way into lunch. So when they go into lunch, um, dude, and, 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 you know, got ready. I guess, he, you know, you gave him enough time to get ready. And um, when they going over there to lunch, and they we, they get in the um, child hall, and once they get in the child hall, you got to get in this line to go all the way around, get your tray, you know, go sit down or whatever, whatever. So they in the line, and they arguing and beefing, and they steady running their mouth, they mean mugging each other, they pass a couple of words, and um, dude just pull the joint out, man, and run up on them and just start hitting them. Bam, bam, bam. So he fighting the dude off, they rumbling, the police done got called immediately, they come rushing in there, flooding in there, you know what I'm saying? But dude, dude these was two young dudes too, dude hit him up bad, he hit him up worse than he thought he was because like I say, when you playing with that knife and you ain't, you ain't really, you know, you ain't really experienced in that and you, you know, you trying to set the example, you trying to show people that you a go, you trying to, you know, keep, keep the wolves up off you. And you may do more damage than you think you're doing, man, because that knife is, is very, very tricky, man. That that Bethlehem get to going in you and you trying to stop a dude or put him down and hurt him or, 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 or keep him from doing something to you. But in your mind, you trying to say, I ain't trying to kill a dude because, you know, I, I got to pay a, a mean price for that. You know what I'm saying? But you can never be sure because we not doctors, man. We, we you know, we not surgeons. We not, uh, 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 you know, we don't know what's going to happen once you make that move and when you do that. And a lot of dudes don't understand that. And they get themselves in a, a really bad way, man, when they pick that thing up trying to impress somebody instead of picking that thing up and trying to protect your life, trying to, you know, preserve your life. That's a difference. You know, when you do what you have to do or you do what you're doing because you're trying to make an example, you're trying to impress somebody. And a lot of dudes, um, a lot of dudes get hurt real bad behind that. Some dudes lose their life behind that. But in, in turn, on the flip side, the dudes is pushing it. They, they, they in, in, in turn lose their life, too, because you may end up you may end up with a life sentence. You may end up going to the electric chair. You may end up you know, spending years in hole and, and that may damage your mind, that may damage your psyche. You know, you come out, you ain't the same no more. And um and also you 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 know you, you look that different. You know, you think you creating a reputation and you just may be doing that, but you also putting a target on your back for when a dude beef with you, now he know that you know you'll you'll use deadly force. So what do you think he gonna use when he beefing with you? 
You know, what do you think he gonna bring to the table if he if he got altercation with you, if he got words with you, when he got knowledge that you done did this to such and such over here. So he coming with the same deadly force. So, you know, once you start it, you gotta be prepared to finish it. You know, this this now is who you are. This now is who you're gonna be perceived as. So this is what you're gonna have to deal with for the rest of your bit. And, and you know, a lot of people always just look at it one side, or oh, I do this to him, or I do that to him. Okay, well, somebody will do it to you too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody will do it to you too, especially when they know that you got that in you. You know, so yeah, um, but he 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 messed old boy up real bad. I remember that incident because we got locked down and we stayed locked down for like two days, man, because he uh he he messed dude up real bad. So they was they gonna investigate <clears throat> And they're going to look at the pod. They're going to make sure he ain't got no buddies that's cool with his buddies or that's cool with his cellar that's cool. You know, where it's going to be some after uh, uh, aftermath behind what happened if it happens in your block. So, yeah, you know, everybody pays for uh, everything that anyone does in prison, man. It's just like a ripple effect, man. They're going to make us all pay for it because they're going to all try to, you know, uh, they're going to try to set the example that, uh, well, if y'all do this, this is what's going to happen. So, you know, and, and that's one of the biggest things about prison, man. Everybody be mad because they be like, well, why do everybody got to pay for what one person do? You know what I'm saying? I ain't come to prison with him. I came to prison by myself. But that's just how they run the system. You know, if if, if somebody does this, man, everybody going to pay for it. But then at the same time, they'll give you a, a inciting a riot charge or or, or, or They'll give you um, a gathering and in, 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 in a group or something. It's, it's, it's different charges they get, give you if you try to speak up when they when they got a beef with one inmate and then you try to speak up for the other inmate, they'll tell you it ain't your business. Well, if it ain't my business when I'm trying to point out a right that's wrong about my brother, you know, about my fellow comrade, my, my fellow convict, if it ain't my right to speak up on that, why is it my right to be punished when he do something wrong? You see what I'm saying? That's the contradiction in prison. You can't speak up for your next man because they'll lock you up. They'll give you a charge. They say you inciting a riot or you trying to cause commotion or whatever. But yet at the same time, this same dude can go do something and it's going to lock the whole part down. I'm going to be punished for it. So if I'm going to be punished for it, why, for when he do wrong, why can't I speak up for him when I think he in the right? You know, but they, they don't look on that like that. They they frown upon that, man. You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, the system is crooked. It's all the way crooked, man. It's biased. It's um, it's racist. You know, and, and yeah, it's racist. Even when you got, you know, your own um kind that's in charge, you know, they still run the prison according to the hierarchy. You know what I'm saying? It be your own people that'll be straight dogging you in there. You know what I'm saying? But I will say... It, it's still better to be on flatland than be all the way up there in the mountains because up there in the mountains, they, 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 they make it known exactly how they coming and what's going on. But that kitchen, man, I'm telling you, I done seen some vicious fights in that kitchen. Even if the, 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 the little time that I did go to the kitchen, I, I've still seen many fights in the kitchen myself. And I didn't even go to the kitchen a lot. You know, rarely ever at all. When I did go, I had to go over there to meet somebody that might have been in another building or whatever. But I've always uh, seen uh, rumbles, rumbles in the kitchen, man, from the time I started out, all the way from receiving all the way until I got out of prison. They were still fighting in the kitchen. Man, they was fighting in the kitchen when I was in re-entry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They fighting in the kitchen when I was in re-entry. I done seen COs get punished in the kitchen, the ones that work in there for being, you know, overbearing, for uh, uh, hawking dudes. Oh, you got extra. And dudes and pop, pop, just take off on them because they so frustrated, you know what I'm saying? And they, they, they don't like that, that that pressure of somebody standing over top of them. You guarding a 35 cent tray that ain't worth garbage anyway, and you trying to worry about if somebody getting some extra trays, you know? So dudes get irritated and take off in there, man. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen a lot, man. One of the most classic fights that happened in the kitchen, man, was, you know, with, with Chucky and Watson. I mean, I spoke about that in the Chucky video. Y'all go back and watch the Chucky video. But that was an epic fight in there, man, because both of them dudes was well known. Both of them dudes had big reputations. Both of them dudes was known to put that work in. And they was actually from the same place on the street, you know, but uh, they had a problem and, um, the problem was festering and festering and everybody was talking about it and everybody knew it was going to come to a head and 
where did it come to a head at? In the kitchen, you know, and they were just getting their trays and they ended up walking by each other and then it just popped off. Bang, bang, bang. And I mean, they was rumbling in there. I mean, they was turning the whole kitchen up, man. The people done called the, the other people, but they still rumbling, you know, and Chucky ended up, you know, they ended up bell hugging and getting face to face and trying to get the, you know, advantage on each other and Chucky, and bit the man lip off, bit half of his lip off and spit it in the flow, you know, so it was crazy, you know what I'm saying, a CO, to my understanding, the CO eventually found it, the, the piece of the lip and put it on some ice and they had to take him to the hospital, man, to get his lip sewed back on, so it, it was crazy, man, I mean, insane, I'm talking about, this is all going down in the kitchen. It's all going down in the kitchen. That's that kitchen work, man. I done seen uh, my, my, my old homeboy, uh, Madlock, man, that knew that karate, that kickboxing stuff before, you know, he came into penitentiary knowing that kickboxing stuff. And don't want nobody really even talking about kickboxing. Everybody talking about boxing, wrestling, this. Uh, Madlock knew that stuff already. I done seen Madlock knock dudes out in the kitchen with roundhouse kicks. My, you know what I'm saying? Break jaws and stuff. I mean... <laughs> it, that kitchen, man, I'm telling you, you don't even want to be over there. Because then, if that Bethlehem start to swinging and dudes get to stabbing in there, then you have dudes that come in there too, and they got a group of dudes, and they get ready to move on another group of dudes, and they want to pop it off in the kitchen so they can keep it, you know, isolated. There ain't no a, a whole lot of other dudes going to come get in it. That, like I say, this is why they choose the kitchen. And you get them dudes in there, they got three, four of them dudes, and they go in there, three, four, five of these dudes, and everybody strapped in there, and them, that Bethlehem get to sling, and then you got everybody jumping up, everybody moving, trays falling, dudes throwing food, dudes, dudes throwing trays. We used to have steel trays. Them steel trays done split many heads open and everything where they ended up getting rid of them and going to plastic trays because so many dudes got their heads split open, they got... They they, 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 they they skull crack with steel trays. They had steel trays, man, and the edges of them things were sharp. If you turn it to the side and hit some, man, you could kill a dude, you know. So when all of that stuff get to happen and you got dudes running around, jumping over tables, trying to get away from that Bethlehem, you might be just sitting there eating. They done jump across your plate, your tray, and everything going. So you don't know. You might get end up getting hit. On a humbug just because you in the way trying to get out the way. So it be like like a little mini riot, man, when that thing pop off in the kitchen like that, man. So it, it, it is a deadly place to be. And then you have dudes in there that ain't got no fight in them. They ain't got no no drama in them. They ain't about none of that. They be terrified when the stuff like that jump off in the kitchen. You know, they you see them, they'll lay down on the ground or they'll run over to the corner or they'll try to run, get close to a police. Man, it... <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I done seen some crazy stuff in that joint, man. And I, after a while, like I say, when I stopped going in there, I just used to sit back in the block and wait for them to come back from the kitchen and tell me all the drama that went down over there because somebody going to tell it, somebody going to talk about it, you know. Um, one of the last dudes, too, that I remember was Fresh, man. Shout out to Fresh, man. Um, you know, rest in peace, Fresh, man. This is another example of, you know, to me, for how vicious prison is, man. Um, Fresh was a dude out of New York, man. He was a cool little, little dude, man. That's why they called him Fresh. He always, even in the penitentiary, he trying to dress good. He always fly. He talking that sun and, you know, that New York talk and all that, man. And um, he was a good dude, man. But he had a uh, he had that, that double talk. He always, you know, big old smile. And he always felt like he could talk his way out of everything. And he had that little... You know, that little flim flammery with him. But it was, it wasn't like the larceny flim flammery. It, it, well, it was larceny, but it was like he, he used to come at it in such a, such a way, man, where you, it was hard for you to really get mad at him, man, because he, he done did it to me before, you know what I'm saying? He done came to bar and stuff and tell me he gonna have, you know, I got you, son, I got you. And then he ain't got it and I'm mad and I'm ready to, you know, and, uh, yeah, man, and uh, he always smooth it over, but uh, yeah, he, he he did that to some dudes, man, and um, they catch him in the kitchen, man, one day. This is when I'm on out of way, too, right, right before I made parole. They catch Fresh in the kitchen one day, and uh, dude just, you know, Fresh always would talk that talk. 
you know, because people would talk that talk in prison to try to keep you up off of him. And Fresh talked that talk, and he was from New York, and he was like, no, you know, son, no, I ain't going to let nobody do nothing to me, son. I'm gonna, they going to have to kill me. I'm going yeah, to go for my... And, and, you know, that'll work for a while, but eventually you're going to have to produce that, you know. And um, dude caught him in the kitchen, man, about some money that he owed him, man, and just, just hauled off and just smacked him. He didn't even punch him. He smacked him. Bah! In front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? So Fresh tried to run. Fresh just took off and broke to the door and told the CO, open the door, open the door. And um, the CO was like, what's up? What's up? He said, no, open the door. I got to go. I got to go. So the dude ain't pursue him or nothing like that. So Fresh ended up just standing there because she wouldn't open the door. So Fresh just stood over by the door and waited for the doors to open. When the doors opened and, and, and the child was over, Fresh came back. But he ran back to the building because he thought dude was going to get down on him. But dude actually slept next door. So... When he get back to the building, man, everybody talking about it. Man, all that stuff Fresh told, man, dude, smack that on the way out of Fresh, man. Fresh ran, woo, woo, woo. And then, you know, uh, uh, you know that's going to just ruin your reputation. So now everybody down on Fresh, everybody putting pressure on Fresh, everybody looking at Fresh different now because he, he didn't let the dude, you know, ruin his whole reputation. You know, the whole facade that you would do something is over because you didn't. Fresh try to come back with... He didn't do he didn't do nothing because he felt like the dude had some dudes with him and he felt like the dude had that thing on him and he didn't have nothing so he didn't want to you know what I'm saying really rumble but he was like man I'm gonna straighten it though I'm gonna straighten it he didn't <laughs> he did he just stayed in the building he stopped going out for about a month trying to smooth the thing over he was scared to leave the building he thought the dude was gonna get him he didn't tell you know which was a plus but he was scared and that got him exposed man. And, um, you know, his his bit from that point on, the rest of the time before I made parole, it, it, it was a little rough on him, you know. And that's what's going to happen when you talking that talk and you, when it comes time to produce, if you don't produce, then that's what's going to happen to you. But the reason why Fresh Name came up, man, was because since I've been out, man, somebody um hit me up and told me, man, that Fresh had got out, man, and he was doing real well, man. He was, you know, he used to always talk about the love for his daughter, you know what I'm saying? Always talked about that. I just want to get out and take care of my daughter, man. Woo, woo, woo. And um, said he got out, man, and he was doing real good for a while. But, you know, he came out here with that same mindset, man, that, you know, and getting in the drug game and trying to make fast money, you know. Knowing the risks, knowing what you just came from, knowing the things that you've been through, he still chose, you know, that route to try to get some money. And um, he ended up getting locked up again and, um... Man, they was gonna give him a lot of time, man, for what he got caught for, and he was going he was facing some more time, and he had just got out of, he hadn't even been out, but maybe a year or two, to my understanding. And um, man, they say fresh, uh, didn't want to go back to prison, man. He could sit, felt like he couldn't do it, and you know, unfortunately, they say he hung himself in the jail, man. And um, dude called me and told me that, man, like, did you hear what happened to fresh? And I was like, what fresh? Said, you know, the fresh do it, and that zone just 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 drugged me, man, because. It's like different when you know somebody and you've been around them and stuff like that, even if you weren't like super cool with them, but it's like you've been around them. You, you've seen the life in them. You've seen, you know, the potential in them. You've seen their character. And then for something like that to happen, man, it just, it always just strike me as, as shocking. You know what I'm saying? So I was shocked because Fresh was young too, man. For, I don't even think Fresh was 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he chose to take his life and to go back up in that hell hole that we call prison, man, because that's exactly what it is. And that's from a dude who know, because he just came from there, so he know what it takes to, to, you know, make it through a day in there, you know, and then wake up and got to do the same thing over again. That's why it, it, you know, it puzzles me when dudes come out here and they go back into taking risks to go back up in there. It's just, it just puzzles me, man, when you know, you know what I'm saying? What's in there and what's going on? So it's it's just crazy situation, man. But uh, you know, uh, R.I.P. Fresh. But yeah, man, Fresh was one of the last ones that I remember with that with them kitchen incidents, man. But it was just so many over the years, man. Kitchen incidents where you know I just seen brawls in there, I seen fights in there. I told y'all how the D.C. riot uh jumped off with with, with uh with Richmond, and, and, you know, back on Augusta, man, with Big Block jumping up on the table and just throwing the tray and talking about set it off, and there's just mayhem in there. Everybody's fighting. They throwing trays. Dudes pulling the Bethlehem out. Dudes getting hit over by the juice. I mean, it's just, it's 
chaotic, man. It's just like mad crazy, you know, and th those were my early years. And see, like I say, that was putting things in my head about the kitchen. And back then, they didn't even lock the kitchen, you know, but it's still the kitchen is just a small area. It's just too small and just, you know, too condensed for something like that to jump off. You have no, you know, it's tables everywhere. Tables are within three feet of each other. So, you know, it's just too much, too much, uh, uh, confusion in there and too much you know uh, uh things in the way man for you to really be able to be uh you know uh, uh, uh maneuver in there and do what you got to do especially if you got more than one or two people coming at you man you it's like you blocked off you know you caged in and you can't get nowhere so it's either a fight because flight is out of the question you know what i'm saying especially when they lock them doors it ain't no fight or flight it's fight you know what I'm saying, to survive, and that's what it is, and then it's hard to try to smuggle the Bethlehem in the kitchen, because you getting shook down before you go in there, you getting shook down when you come out of there, so where you gonna, you know, put it at, and it depends, you have some officers, they might brush by you and keep going, and dudes will know those officers and try to pick them out to go to them, wait for them to get in line, move around, or act like they got some. Because it'd be one or two officers shaking you down when you go in there. If it's one that you know ain't going to really do nothing, that's the one they'll try to pick because they might be dirty. They might got that thing on them. They might be coming in there to put out, put in some work. So it gets in there, but it don't supposed to. Then you got super cops. They want to, you know, harass you and molest you when they touching you, man. Make you want to punch them in their face. They feeling on you so much and trying to make sure ain't nothing in there. But most of the time, they doing that. Not because they care about your safety in there. They doing that because they don't want nothing to happen when you might do something to them. You see what I'm saying? So it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. Them kitchen wars, man. Them kitchen fights, it be, be, yeah, they be a little different, man, because they isolated and people cannot get out. And a lot of dudes, man, get in there and get punished, man. I mean, punished. I seen a dude in there one time. He got pimped by the cage because it's a cage that separates it's two it's two child halls. It's one right here. It's one over there. You had to go in one or the other. And but it but it's a cage in between where as to if they open the cage, the whole you can go on both sides. They never open it when they serve it. But it's a cage there. And a lot of dudes go over there to the cage, be talking to the dudes in the other job. But they usually have an officer over there that's talking to you to try to keep you from over. You can't go over there. Come on, get from over there. So usually they'll have that. But I seen a dude, man, when the dude pulled that thing out and just started coming at him, he started running. He was running all around the trays. They, they laid it and called the 1033, they, they, you know, for backup. So they waiting on them to come. But he he running and running, and he can't get away. And he ended up tripping and falling. And dude got down on him, man, and just started hitting him. And he just got up. He got up from getting hit, rumbling and kicking the dude, got up. And then he ran over there, but he ran the wrong way. He just turned around and tried to run. But where he ran, he ran to the corner where the cage was. And he got caught by the cage, man. The dude caught him over there by that cage. And, man, he lit him up. He almost killed him over there by that cage. He hit that dude probably about definitely double digits, 10, 15 times. Blood was everywhere. The police came in. They were scared to stop the dude. They hollering and yelling until one of them was brave enough because his back was turned because he still was, you know, trying to put it in him. And the dude just jumped on his back. And when he jumped on his back, all the rest of the police just piled in on him like some, you know, some football stuff, man, when the dude got tackled and everything. And they ended up getting him out of there, man. But they had to the medevac that dude. And these young cats. You see what I'm saying? These are young cats, man, getting their life ruined and, and possibly never be the same again, man. And, um, you know, this is what goes on in there. This is this is the frustration, the irritation that goes on in a dude. And we in this cage, the environment, man, and they just got us in there and we end up in there killing each other. You know what I'm saying? Killing each other. All us in the same position, but we end up in there just trying to kill each other, man, because we mad at the world. We mad at ourselves. We mad at the system. We mad at the administration, but we take it out on each other. You know what I'm saying? We take it out on each other, and it's it's crazy, man. It's sad, and it's it's sickening, but that's that's what that's what goes on in there, you know? And yeah, that, that young dude, man, I never saw him again, man, but I, you know what I'm saying, I, I heard he was really, really bad, man, like he was on life support for a minute, but I know he did survive how how he, you know, was after, what was the effects of it, I don't know, but um, yeah, that was crazy in there, that was crazy, and that was an incident that I was in there with. And I was just over there to see somebody. I wasn't even over there to eat that garbage. And that ended up, I'm like, man, you know, 
boom, boom, boom. But, you know, like, and I didn't have that Bethlehem on me neither because, like I said, even if you get caught with it, you're you going down. You're going down in a big way, man. They're going to, you know, ship you straight up off of there. You know, at one point, you just can't get caught with it. You're going to get a charge, possession of a weapon or whatever. And you may stay about five, six months in the hole. But after, you know, them things start, you know, getting more and more, uh, 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 relevant in prison and dudes was you know using them with, with more deadly force man they yeah you get caught with one there you, you you going up in the mountains for five years just getting caught with it and not even using it five years you going up there in the mountains with them super duper racist people up there so yeah so it's crucial that you have a good place to hide it and um you know but like i say it's in penitentiary rules you rather get caught with it than without it when you need it you know, so, um, yeah, man, I'm just rambling this morning, just talking out of my head, man, about this kitchen stuff, man. It's I don't know what brought it up in my mind this morning, but I still wanted to drop it off on y'all. I uh, hope this video won't too, uh, you know, here, there, everywhere, but um, hopefully you got the message, man. And like I say, it's a blessing in every lesson, man. And the blessing is, man, that, you know, we live and we learn, you know, if we fortunate, man, we live and we learn, man. So every experience that I ever went through, it taught me some. Every experience I ever went through, you know, gave me more insight and more uh, 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 wisdom on what not to do, what to be prepared for, what to look for, you know. And um, I think all of that helped me make it through this this journey that I went through, man, in them 33 years in prison. Because uh, I, I, I make no mistake, man, that uh, I'm fooling myself that I, that I won't. I've been lucky, man, and blessed to, to, to make it through and to be out here to share this message, man, and hope other people can receive this message and understand, man, that your life is precious. And um, prison, man, will, will only, you know, put you on the decline of life, man, period. You know, it's you at the bottom of the barrel, you know, you sitting there, you watching life go by while you fighting for your life. So it's a, it's a, um, it's, it's a place to nowhere. So, you know, hopefully people will get this message and understand that, man, and, you know, do what you got to do out here, man. And um, no matter how hard the struggle is, just know you're in a better place out here than you would ever be inside there. So stay free, man. Stay focused and um, be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. And by all means, man, duck the penitentiary, man, and duck them hooks. Boom! Boom! They out there, man. Peace, man. We out here. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know. And uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really—that's that's really the, all that counts.